Hello, today I'm going to teach you why carnivores need a very, very small amount of vitamin C, almost none. And uh, for you, those of you who only like Jubilee videos, those will be out soon. Okay, don't worry. And here we have a little painting drawn by carnivores because humans are and were carnivores. They weren't draw they weren't drawing uh, little pictures of broccoli. How, how do you even draw broccoli? No one knows. It's a stupid plant. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Requirements and competition. Okay. Guys, look at glucose. Look at vitamin C. You may notice they're quite similar. Look at that. Wow. They're almost the same. And uh, what this means actually is that glucose and vitamin C compete for something called the GLUT4 transporter. Because they're so molecularly similar uh, to get into cells, they both use GLUT4. Now, what this means for carnivores is that when you get rid of glucose from the diet, GLUT4 is wide open for vitamin C. Okay, so this is the first reason why you need a lot less vitamin C on a carnivore diet, among the six next reasons, but this is just the first reason. And uh, yeah, this is pretty beautiful. How nature works out when you aren't pouring sugar down your throat, uh, you actually need a lot less vitamin C. It's pretty beautiful. And in fact, guess what? I wouldn't supplement vitamin C if I were you on a carnivore diet because excess vitamin C actually goes into oxalic acid, aka oxalate, oxalates. So here we have the oxidized version of vitamin C. And then guess what? Both these pathways, oxalic acid. Okay, and oxalates actually, and here's an argument against consuming any oxalates at all, by the way. Oxalates deplete your taurine because taurine is used to detoxify things, even heavy metals from fish. Fish have a lot of taurine, but then some of that will be used to detoxify heavy metals. Like, you know, oysters are full of taurine. And yeah, so every time you megadose vitamin C, a lot of that will go to oxalates, which have to be detoxified. Not all of them can be, and this will also deplete your taurine, okay? Now, what's interesting is some diabetics can actually develop scurvy-like symptoms due to chronically high blood sugar, blocking the uptake of vitamin C. So some of these diabetics, because they have so much glucose in the blood, it's blocking the GLUT4 completely. So they can get scurvy. You could be a diabetic shoveling fruit down your mouth, but if you have chronically high, super elevated blood sugar, guess what? You can literally have scurvy, essentially, at least the symptoms of it. Number two, meat contains vitamin C. All animal cells, including meat, contain vitamin C in the cytoplasm, just like human cells. Right, so just logically, if you have an animal and you kill it, then you eat a pound of that animal, that will have vitamin C in it. If it didn't, that animal would have been dead already. It's an essential nutrient, okay? Now, the FDA usually labels meat as having no vitamin C, not because it actually has none, but because they decide the amount isn't worth mentioning, which is arbitrary. It's a value judgment statement. It's not scientific. And on top of that, many nutrient tests were done after removing the water, which makes the vitamin C content even lower than it actually is in fresh meat. Same with taurine, etc. So it's important to remember the less fresh and cooked meat, uh, I'm, I have autism, I can't read properly. Point is, the more you cook your meat, the less fresh your meat is. The more down here it is, the less vitamin C and taurine and etc. it will have. So if you are going to cook your meat, this is the sweet spot right there. Historical evidence. So in the Napoleonic Wars, soldiers developed scurvy on dried biscuits and minimal meat. And here we can see a 4K image of this happening. This is proof, okay? You can't dispute this. It's in 4K, sorry. And Napoleon actually slaughtered horses and used fresh horse meat to cure scurvy. Even when there were still carbs in the fresh horse meat a little bit. Here's, you can, you can pause to read. Point is, this this was kind of a separate thing. Like with with um, the ship, this is a bad image placement. The point is, uh, I guess, okay, this is really unorganized. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's talk about sailors. Okay, that was bad. That was bad. Okay, sailors. So, Officers with fresh meat access did not get scurvy, okay? This is important to understand. They were not the ones getting scurvy. Sailors who ate dried biscuits plus some dried salted meat did get scurvy, and they would eat these things called hard tack. This is what they were eating. These are the people who got scurvy, okay? It was shit. A piece of shit is what they were eating. Okay, next example. Tribes. Again, we have the Inuit, the Maasai, the Hadza, the Kalahari, thriving without scurvy on meat-based, very low-carb diets, especially the Inuit. They literally only eat meat most of the year, raw meat. They do eat some of the organs, some of the blood, and the muscle meat, and they don't get scurvy. Okay, scurvy's done. 
Collagen and amino acid pathways. So vitamin C is often cited as needed for collagen th synthesis, the hydroxylation of proline slash lysine. Okay. Now carnivore diets supply hydroxyproline and lysine directly from the protein. I, I talk about this a lot, okay? Reducing the need for vitamin C once again. When you're eating meat, you're getting hydroxylysine, hydro hydroxyproline in the diet. You don't need to synthesize it. You're also, if you eat something like chicken skin or other more collagenous cuts of meat, you get glycine in the meat as well, okay? You get collagen in the food you're eating. And you'll notice people's skin looks better who actually consume collagenous cuts of meat and just meat in general, especially raw meat. Other nutrients like retinol, vitamin D3, K2, MK4 version, support collagen synthesis and tissue health, further reducing the need for much vitamin C. Awesome. Chromium and GLUT4 regulation. So chromium upregulates GLUT4 receptors, which increases vitamin C uptake into cells, and chromium is going to raise on, on a carnivore diet. Again, things like oysters, mussels, shrimp, pork, beef, eggs, all have chromium. Awesome. This mechanism can further reassure carnivores uh, concerned about vitamin C. Why can I not read well? Maybe it's these glasses. Yeah, just put these glasses on and just ruin me. Um, now, when is there a risk of deficiency? If you are worried about vitamin C on a carnivore diet, uh, eating only overcooked or dried meats along with pasteurized dairy could be a concern due to the vitamin C being deficient in both foods accompanied by carbs, especially pasteurized milk. People are like, bro, who cares about the vitamin C in pasteurized milk? Well, you know, I kind of care because there is uh, lactose, which will break down into galactose and glucose in milk. No, it doesn't break down into fiber, by the way. Some people are saying that stupid shit. No, it doesn't. Uh, still, uh, point is, these carbohydrates will compete for the GLUT4 transporter. They will cause a little bit of glycation, depending on how much you drink. Okay. Point is, you need some raw dairy, raw meat, and diets, at least rare meat, to be okay. All right. Practical observations. Many carnivores report improved gum or teeth health compared to high carb and even supplementing vitamin C. Gum bleeding common on mixed diets despite supplements, it disappears on carnivore. In the case studies we see, high dose vitamin C supplementation is unnecessary and potentially harmful with the oxalates. Next, this is just a promotion. You may end the video if you'd like, but if you did find this valuable and you do want to improve your looks and health and you, you like this type of information, you generally kind of want to see what I have to offer, you can check out the school community if you would like to, okay? That's what I built it for. Here are all the courses if you're interested. There you are. There's a lot and there's more being added. Okay. So yeah, you can look through that. Uh, links in the description for more info. If you do want to improve your looks and health, we've gotten people a lot of good results in there. I have all my health guides just like this one and step-by-step -step guides. So yeah, thank you uh, for watching. Peace.